Hey guys, it's Ollie. Welcome back. Um, I'm doing a build series on the GCM uh, F5K glider. This is part one, and we're going to get the servos installed in the fuselage. We're going to run the pull springs back to the tail, install the springs in the tails, the control horns, all that good stuff and get the motor mount installed and the spinner and prop and then uh, that'll wrap up part one and then later on we'll do the wing and uh, the receiver and speed control and all that kind of stuff so let's get started okay I'm starting on the control horns for the V-tails um, what I've done is taped around the slots and I've left about a half a millimeter all around and you just use the tip of my exacto knife to scratch that area up so that leaves me a space to basically get a glue fillet going and then on the horns I have sanded and scratched up the horns a little bit so I'm just gonna go ahead and use some uh, Oh, I'll probably use some slow curing epoxy and a slight bit of cabosil to glue these in. Okay, so the horns are epoxied in, and I angled them inward slightly. I don't know if you can see that. I don't know if I'm supposed to do that. I think they probably just go in 90 degrees. doesn't really matter. But uh, I did angle them in slightly because they stick out a lot. Um, and then in the meantime, I have designed and 3D printed some trays for these XO6H servos. I'm hoping to use these in both the wing and the fuselage. So they fit, they fit pretty good like this. And I will actually leave a link in this video where you can download and uh, print out your own frames if you want to. So look for that link. Prepping the servos for the V-tails. Uh, again, XO6s and in my printed frames, I've scuffed up the bottoms of the frames. The servos are bolted in, and I have the arms prepped. And I'm using these single sided arms that come with the uh, servos, and I've cut them down so I'm using just the second hole from the inside so I cut the rest off okay so I've already gone ahead and put on the steel wire the strings and crimped them on both the servos because uh, it's going to be much easier to work on the tail uh, to finish it up on the tail than it is trying to fiddle with them at the servo side so I'm going to go ahead and actually get the servos mounted now that the uh, arms are on centered and the, the strings are on and crimped. And I've also scuffed up both of these uh, fiberglass mounts here in preparation for uh, gluing. Alright, well I got the servos and trays uh, glued in. I just used some black uh, CA and you might be thinking, oh how are you going to get to those screws well actually I lined up the servos so that I can get the rear screws through the mounting holes for the wing that works really good um, I will probably ask to have the location of these fiberglass plates changed so maybe they'll be closer together it'll just be one plate with both servos on it uh, that way they'll be easier to mount if you want to use trays so, but so far it looks pretty good. Again, I have the, the strings on and I'm going to have to feed like a little bit of piano wire from the back in here and attach the wire to it and then pull it through to get the, the, the strings out of the fuselage. But uh, I'll do that when the epoxy has dried on those control horns that we made. And before I can do that, or before I can hook up the strings, I need to install springs in the tails. Let me show you where I'm at now. Um, I've cut two little pieces of 
this white tubing, like push rod tubing. Um, and I'm going to use that to make little bushings where the strings exit the fuselage. I always do that just because I don't want the uh, steel rubbing on the carbon because it like I don't know I don't want the string to break. And then my glue is dried on the horn, so those are ready to go. So once I get these uh, little bushes glued in here, I can route the strings. And what I'm going to do is just use a a round file like this. I'm gonna come in here. with the file and just kind of sand it at an angle so the angle I'm going to kind of make this angle a little shallower and just open it up until these bushings fit. Here's what this hole looks like after I filed it down a little bit to put an angle in it and I'm just going to slip in those uh, bushings and glue them in. Okay so the bushings are glued in here's what they look like um, I'm going to, going to kind of sand them down a little bit just so they don't stick out as much and then that'll basically wrap that up. So after a little sanding here's what these little uh, bushing exits look like. And I'm, I have a piece of steel wire here and I'm going to run this through and up towards the front and then I'm going to try to attach these strings to them and then pull it back through so they can exit out the back. Okay so I got the cables routed through the fuselage pretty simple and next thing I'm going to do is um, install springs and in the V-tails so the spring is going to go on this side of the elevator and then go in and then go that way into the fixed portion. The kit didn't come with uh, springs, uh, production kits will, uh, but I'm using 0.4 millimeter wire and they're about 50 millimeters uh, long from bend to bend. So this is all standard stuff. I'm just going to go ahead and install these and then I'll show you what it looks like afterwards. Okay, I got the springs in. Pretty straightforward, just just like a regular any kind of F3K part. Um, got this tail already on here, uh, so all I'm gonna do now is hook up these strings to the control horns. And I'll power up the servos to do that to make sure everything's centered. Okay, um, getting ready to do the cable at the tail. the The servo side is powered up and centered. And I already kind of have a loop going on here, so I just got to pull it tight, really. And then somehow figure out how to crimp it. So... Okay, I'm just going to hold it with my left hand and try to crimp it with my right. Got some pliers. Should be it. Pretty neutral. Slightly down, but I think it's okay. And 
I have my tester still hooked up, so we might as well see what happens here. Seems to work pretty good. Like that. And I always like to just put a couple drops of that was too much. Just a couple of drops of CA like in front and behind. Just like a little bit of extra. Insurance. So there's one side done, that's it. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and do this. the other side, it'll be exactly the same. Okay, I finished up the tails. So that's what it looks like. And in the fuselage. Looking pretty good. So I'm just kind of wondering what the next thing I should do, and I think I'm going to um, maybe glue this motor mount in. I thought it was already glued in, it just fit really well, but actually it, uh, it needs to be glued in, so I have to scuff this up with some sandpaper and, and epoxy it in here. Well, after a little bit of deliberation, I've decided to actually restring the fuselage. Um, I have to put the receiver back here, and as you can see, the strings are sort of in the way, so I want to put some pieces of tubing over the, the strings and glue the tubing to the sides of the fuselage. And the other thing is, uh, the horns I chose are giving me a lot of throw, so too much, so some shorter horns would definitely uh, help me out here to keep some res resolution in the servos. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. It's going to be the exact same process. Uh, I won't show that on uh, camera, but I will show you guys what, the, what it looks like back here when I put the tubing in. So there's the original arm I put in, the single sided, and I'm on the second hole out. And all I'm going to do is just cut that uh, second hole off and shorten the arm a bit. So we're only going to have one hole on those single-sided uh, servo arms. Alright, I got the new strings in. And you can see I put some uh, plastic tubing. I glued it in the fuselage on both sides. And that's just going to keep the strings away from whatever receiver I put in here. So that's going to help me out. And then I have the shorter horns in there can see and the tail looks looks the same really as the first time so the next thing we're gonna do is put the motor in I've already bolted it to the uh, CNC mount I've got the spinner and prop installed and I tried to scuff up the the mount as much as possible and I've also sanded in here and cleaned it up with some alcohol. And I'm just going to put some epoxy in here and glue the motor in. Uh, just put some tape around the front just to protect it from any epoxy seepage. And you can see I put some epoxy on the inside of the fuselage first. That's a little uh, three hour epoxy and some cabosil. And I've also just put some tape around the lip of the uh, motor mount and I'm going to try to feed this wire into the fuselage without dribbling uh, epoxy all over it so I'll have to kind of hold the fuselage vertically so I can't do it right here so I just held it up tail down and I'm going to slip this in Uh, 
like that. And then I will use some masking tape to kind of help hold it. Get this camera up a little bit. So I'm going to put pressure on the, the spinner and pull the tape. Like that, and I'll just probably put a couple more pieces on there. So there we go. So we'll let this dry and see if we can look in here. That basically wraps up the uh, fuselage build once the glue dries on that motor mount. So I'm going to move on to doing the uh, aileron servos, horns, and linkage. But I think I'll do that in a separate video, like part two. So we'll just wrap this one up here because I don't want to make this super long. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, hopefully it's uh, helpful to some of you if you're going to build one of these uh, F5K models from GCM. Again, some of the little details might change because this is pre-production. So, but generally, I think all you know, everything, will, all the techniques will apply. All right, I look forward to seeing you in part two when we're going to start working on the wing.